what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing or an unpouching as it were. I'm going to give you your first look at the brand new EMP EDC Nimble W. That's right, it is going to be the upcoming Warncliffe version of the amazing Nimble. Yay! I'm a huge fan, you guys know that. I've got a Nimble, I've got a Nimble X. Absolutely love them both. Um, the Nimble is seriously in my running for Knife of the Year. It is one of my favorite knives ever. And I'm pretty excited to see this because, as you guys very well know, I am a huge Warncliffe fan. Um, just, yeah, sure, I might as well pimp my own product while we're here. Uh, Riot and I are going to be offering our second run of the tibias very, very shortly. They just received the blade steel. Anyway, so I'm a huge fan of Warncliffe's. I don't know how it's going to turn out here. Um, there's only one video that exists on YouTube at the time of me making this. Uh, Tri-State EDC got the very first prototype about two months ago to play with. He didn't do a real review. He just kind of pulled it out, showed it, cut with it, played with it, and let everybody see what it was going to look like. That was, I believe, yeah, it was the all blacked out version. This, um, I know John told me what color is in there, but I already forgot. So let's get into this right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the unboxing here. And then after that, I'm going to take a little break. Hopefully it will be seamless in the video and you won't know when I did it. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to do all the photography on it. I'm going to dump that into the video. Then we're going to do the full review. So you're going to get an unboxing and a full review. So let's cut into this. Actually, just make it easier. Go that way too. All right. Don't think, is there a note in here? Might be something that I have to read. I don't know. Oh, I just, I just fell right out the back, didn't it? Okay. Oh, it is a true unpouching. Usually they come in a box. This uh, apparently is the new packaging. Oh, how cute. He, he left me little notes, but I don't need those because I memorize all my shit. Aha! Oh, man, that's cool. So it's like a carbon fiber look. Vinyl pouch. Oh, love the sound of Velcro. This is like when you were eight years old and you got your first wallet. What was it? It was a Velcro wallet. So basically, uh, John is tapping into my inner child. Not not in the way that, that you know, Michael Jackson or, or Joe Biden would. But he's tapping into my inner child. Come on, man. Child with the zippered pouch. Okay. I'm kind of nervous about this because I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about the proportions of the Warncliffe blade and this handle. So I'm going to leave it closed for a second. I really want to experience this with you guys. That's why I chose to do an unboxing. So when we look at it compared to the regular Nimble, it is a little bit longer when it's closed. And up to the Nimble X. Okay, so that, that's, what we're, that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the handle length of the Nimble X and I believe the blade length probably falls right in between the two. We're going to find that out in a minute. So do I want to flip it? I don't want to front flip it because I don't wear skirts. Do I want to flick it? Do I want to thump? Oh, what do I want to do? And that's the beauty of the Nimble is you have so many deployment options. That's why I have so much fun. So let's... Oh, I don't want to show you the whole blade yet. Hold on. Oh, all right. We ready? Oh, that looks good. That looks really, really good. So this is the smooth body. Nice stone wash throughout. Blue anodized backspacer, blue anodized hardware and clip. A lot of times when you get the anodized hardware. You don't get the clip to match, so I dig that. Action is exactly what I expected. So if I choke up, oh, the jimping is still right where I want to be, which if you use a regular nimble, as much as I love it for everything, I mean, this truly is one of my favorite knives, when you choke up in the choil, your thumb actually ends up in front of the jimping and it looks like he has corrected that. 
because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to do a lot of various cutting tasks with this. Oh, nice sticky edge. That means it's nice and sharp. Um, don't worry, I will be cleaning up the blade in a few minutes here when I switch over to do the photography. So we'll get that cleaned up nice. Ooh. So let's get some close-ups, shall we? Come on, well, my camera does not want to do it on its own today. There we go. Nice finishing work by QSP. They do a really nice stone wash, by the way, in the titanium. It's just sparkly enough. Just scratchy enough. Nice big lanyard hole. Here's your backspacer. Kind of blue to purple, blurple. Here's your lock bar. There you see your, uh, your you get the steel insert, and then you've got the uh, the steel insert comes down, so you can't overextend the lock bar. They did a fantastic job on that uh, belt grind. Looks like he's got a little bit of rust coming up on here. That may have been from putting it in that pouch and then it being out in my very hot and humid Texas weather. We have been over 105 degrees every day. Oh my goodness. Alright, so where does that put us in the grand scheme of things? Get this opened up and see how it compares to the three and a half inch, the full size, if you will, Nimble X. Nearly, oh, wow, yeah, that's pretty much identical. So this is a Nimble X size, not a standard Nimble size. So there is your layout, Nimble X, Nimble W, and Nimble. Man, QSP is just doing a bang up job. Now, both of my personal nimbles are stone wash blades. This is the first time I'm seeing how they're doing the satin blade for EMP EDC. And they did a great job. I will say this, uh, like if you look at the Penguin and a few other models that I've played with recently from QSP, um, they have a, a really weird, not only say weird, but very different type of of belt satin on their bevels. Uh, it's, it's almost like you can, they're obviously they're machine ground, but they have like almost this rainbow hue to them, which is cool, but it can get a smudge very easily. And then it's almost friggin' impossible to clean the smudges off. And I can tell you that from photographing it, from videoing it, it has been, it was so difficult the day that I did the full QSP Penguin video. And I had, I think five or six of the knives and I had to clean off so much and every time you thought it was clean you put it back down nope there was a smudge over there and a smudge over there so i'm happy to see that they got the satin more like it was belt ground on a grinder and it may well have been or maybe they machine ground it and then they went very quickly uh, with a single pass with a i would say that is probably a 600 grit belt and may have made a quick pass just to, to clean it up. But it, however they did it, they did a fantastic job. I really like that. I like how this feels. Because of the length of the handle, this fits into my hand to allow me to flip it with the flipper more easily. If you remember when I talked about that, when I got my Nimble X, I said that I prefer to reverse flick my Nimble because if I want to use my flipper tab, I have to move the knife up in my hand to access it because it is such a short handle. Meanwhile, the Nimble X, it fits right into my hand and I can access the flipper tab more easily. And that's how this feels. So those of you that prefer flipper tab, you're gonna really love this, but you'll still be able to reverse flick it every bit as easily, thumb flick it, all that other good stuff. Um, but all around, this will be better for utilizing all of the options, whereas the regular Nimble, uh, if you have large hands, I wear large to extra large uh, motorcycle gloves. Um, I have to move the knife up into my hand to access the uh, flipper tab. So this one, you really get that uh, that nice all-around feel to it. You can use everything. 
let's go ahead and switch things over. Um, and what, what we're going to do is I'm going to photograph the knife, show you all the, the photography on it, really give you a, a closer, intimate feel with how the knife is going to look. And uh, then we're going to get into the full review. So uh, I'll probably do some kind of cool dissolving effect here. We'll see. Okay, and we're back. Hope you guys like the, uh, the pictures on that. It's all nice and cleaned up. Oh, hey, darn it. Yeah, I missed a spot right there. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was just talking about how I liked the belt satin. And uh, this one also turned out to be a real son of a bitch to get streaks and fingerprints and stuff off of. So keep that in mind because um, there's going to be a lot of different, excuse me, a lot of different finishing options for you. And uh, stone washing, black wash, satin. Um, me, I'm going to stick with stone washed. It just, it's, it's easier because this is a knife that I really, really, really enjoy carrying. My other ones, I should say. Uh, I really enjoy carrying and I really enjoy cutting with and using. And as such, I'm going to stick with the stone wash because it's much easier to maintain visually. I mean, because, I mean, at some point you still want your knives to look as, you know, as good as they can. You're going to show them off to your buddies and stuff like that. All right, so let's get into the meat of this. Let's get into the review. Let's move this to the side. Uh, and as always, we're going to put the specs over here. So what we're looking at is the Nimble W. It is a Warncliffe design uh, as opposed to the spear point and drop points that we've been seeing in the past. Uh, quick heads up, the Tanto will be coming out in delivering before the Warncliffe. So if you're pre-ordering this, which you can do right now, um, just realize it's going to come in just after the Tanto versions, and I have not had a chance to review the Tanto. I apologize. These are all designed by John Rusk. He's a very, very talented designer and a super, super great guy. I mean, I haven't met him in person yet, unfortunately, because I couldn't go to Blade Show this year, but uh, we've messaged back and forth a lot. He's got a great sense of humor. Obviously, he's a great designer. I like supporting good people, and uh, I feel confident that I am supporting a good person. A good people, a good person. Uh, these are made by QSP. Here's the deal. You're looking at 325 bucks. Insanity, right? We'll talk about that more in the end. Titanium frame lock with an overall length of 7.65 inches. Blade length of 3.3 inches. It will, of course, be M390 once again. The cutting edge is 2.8 inches because you have this very pronounced forward finger choil. It's going to make it more useful and easier to cut with. Uh, blade finishes are satin stone washed or black washed. Handle finishes will be the frag pattern uh, like you've seen me uh, show in my other knives. Uh, full DLC and also stone washed. These do feature ceramic bearings on hardened steel washers. That's what gives you that gliding very, very smooth action, and the washers are not digging into the titanium pockets. Ceramic detent and steel lock bar insert. Now, let's weigh this bad boy and give you the comparison there in the weights. Four point three ounces as opposed to wow, the exact same weight as the Nimble X which will be just a little heavier than the Nimble, which is 3.7 ounces. So there you have your weight out of the way. What do I think of it? Well, having now played with it for uh, just a few minutes, it's everything I expected it to be from owning these two. It's the same level of quality. It's the same great action. It's the same great fidgetability. Yeah, that's a new word. That's right. Brand new sentence. I don't know how I feel about 
where the blade drops off. I understand why they did it the way they did it, because there is the tip of your blade. And this is the same way that the Jason Grant Gripper uh, came out and, and a couple of other Warncliffs. If it were me, I probably would have angled this a little bit more severely where this section met up with the blade a little bit better. That's just me. But here's the deal. The reason he did that is so that you can get a nice full grip on it, even pulled back, because you've got this. If it were angled forward more, you would have way less booty to grab onto. You know, I love to grab the booty. If you're choked up into the blade, however, it's a perfect, perfect four-finger hold. But again, if it were brought in further to match the, the same geometry as the front of the blade, it would be sitting right there on, on your pinky like this. And I believe that a lot of people would have found that to be annoying. So you've got a choice to make as a designer. Is everything going to be about the design and the aesthetics, the visual appeal? Or is it going to be about utility and practicality? You have to find a balance in between the two a lot of times. And sometimes one little thing will be sacrificed for the other. And I think that John found a really good balance here because it feels really solid in the hand. I don't have any issues with the grip on it, the handhold on it, especially when it's when I'm choked up on it. It feels really good. The jimping is exactly where I want it to be. The finger choil is well done. And the size of the handle fits with how you're going to grip the knife. It does make it look a little bit shorter in the blade because the handle is so large. And then it does, you know, this. However, it is more important that the knife fits you properly when you go to use it. That's still the most important thing, and I'm glad that John focused on that. A lot of people, I fear, might have made that alteration and changed the handle shape so that when it's closed, it has a very specific look. And then everybody would have complained about how it feels in the hand and how you can't cut with it because you can't get a good grip on it. Or the corner digs into your little baby pinky. People like to complain for the sake of complaining. All I'm doing is pointing out what I see. And I don't know that that's why he made that choice, but it seems obvious to me. The action is superb. The detent is wonderful. Nice and solid. And one of the things that I noted when I did my original nimble review was that I was amazed at how the detent is set that allows for all of the different types of deployment. Because if you look at a lot of knives that are flippers that also have maybe thumb studs or thumb holes that allow you to flick or slow roll. You've got that sharp, tough detent to get a really good flipping action. And what that will usually do is, if you go to slow roll it, it's such a hard detent to overcome that by the time it finally breaks, it'll fly a little bit out of your, out of your thumb and you've got to go back up and catch up with it or cut yourself on the edge. These aren't like that. It is perfectly tuned for every type of deployment. It doesn't matter which way you want to do it, and I suck at front flipping, but hey, I still was able to do it. No matter how you choose to open this, it's perfect. And it's this, this magical detent that, in my opinion, sets the nimble apart from so many other knives. After the success of the original Nimble, we've seen a lot of brands come out with, you know, the whole multiple deployment methods. And not all of them are able to nail it. Sure, you can open their knives in a multitude of ways, but they're not equal. This is equal. This flips every bit as well as it flicks. And it's just as comfortable to slow roll as it is to flick. It does it all and does it all perfectly. And that's why I'm such an enormous fan of this brand of knives. I think that not only did John design some really, really good looking knives, selected some very, very good variations in the finishes and the colors and the options, but QSP absolutely knocked them all out of the park. 
the action, the detent, the smoothness, the edge, uh, the sharpness of the edges. Everything that was done, every choice that was made on these knives was properly made. They're utterly fantastic. And this is why I said, I think I even said it in the very first video, but I know I said it by the second video. I'm going to end up with a full collection of these. Different finishes, different blade shapes, uh, different body styles. I'm not going to do any more frag for a while. I think I'm going to go for the smooth body in the all-black DLC. I'm kind of thinking that's that's where I'm leaning. I just don't know if I'm going to do this or the Tanto. I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. But I'm going to have more of these for certain. This is still, of these two, this is still my favorite. I love the X. But this is my favorite to carry and my favorite to flip and my favorite to play with because of the size of it. The way that it feels in the hand, it's just... Anybody that knows me knows I don't like that whole reverse Spidey flick thing. This is the knife that changed that. Uh, that and, and then after this, I got the, uh, the Winter Blade Factor, and I, I tend to reverse flick that more than flip it. Because of the way this particular knife sits in my hand, I just find it easier to reverse flick. And I've gotten to the point where I do it a lot. And now I'm doing it to other knives. Now... Damn it, John, I'm a reverse flicker, and it's 100% your fault. So it doesn't really matter which way you go, whether you do the, the nimble W, you do the nimble T, you do a regular nimble, you do a nimble X. You absolutely, I don't say this often because I don't like to be that guy, but you absolutely must get into this family of knives no matter which model it is again the x is pretty fantastic so is the regular nimble and if you're a warncliffe fan like i am well this is going to be a really great way to go too oh it just it feels right it feels fantastic and it's not even broken in yet and for those of you that like to buy flippers and then put skiff bearings into them, you're not going to get any benefit. This is already so fast and so smooth, they all are, that there's no need to swap out the bearings. If I'm not mistaken, somebody, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was Lefty EDC, uh, has done that, and, and he even went, eh, there's, there's no real benefit to buying the skiffs, taking it apart and putting them in. It didn't change anything. Wow, I like how that feels. I really, really like how that feels. Everything about it, like I said before, every decision that was made was made right. Moving the jimping further forward, giving you more jimping, so it doesn't matter how you hold it, you've got a good grip. I love the fact that he has the, the window and then he dishes it out because you have so much area to flick from. And it looks good having that, that different finish in there, the bead blasted finish that goes against all the other finish types that he does. Great pocket clip, super easy in and out of the pocket with great retention. I have no complaints in jeans, in regular pants, in tactical pants, like 5'11 pants, in cargo shorts, uh, running shorts, everything that I've uh, put my nimble in, it's gone in and out very, very easily. Uh, I shouldn't say easily. I don't want you to think it just falls out. What I mean is there, there's no difficulty. You don't have to use a second hand and pry it up. It really does. It hits that lip and glides right in and it holds in securely. As I've talked about a lot of times in the past, I spent a lot of time on my motorcycle and I've had knives that uh, have slid up and almost out of my pocket. I've almost lost knives. This I can ride no problem at all. Doesn't move around. Super cool. I'm going to make the assumption that he's going to be numbering the backspacers like he has done on previous iterations. Again, this is a prototype. So that's probably why it's different. Great stone wash pattern. Feels good all the way around. Yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, 
It's another winner. It's another really good looking, really good feeling, fantastic action knife. And one, oh my God, so much fun to play with. So if you've held off buying a Nimble for any reason, but you're a Warncliffe fan, try it out now. Whether you get a frag or a smooth body or all black, or you get a reverse tuxedo, whatever finish you get, uh, you can, you'll can. you also be able to purchase individually these anodized hardware kits as well. So you can get a plain one, you can get one that's already anodized in the color that you want. Or if you're like, oh, you know what? They're, they're not offering the color I want in the hardware. I'm just going to get a plain one. Then you'll be able to buy the hardware. And then you can modify it and change it around all you want. That's what I love. I love that idea that you can kind of uh, Frankenstein it yourself. You can customize it yourself without paying custom knife pricing. Again, you're looking at $325 in the pre-order. The price will be higher, I'm assuming, once the pre-order is over and then they just start selling them. And they're offering Sezzle. So you get four payments of $81. That's a real good way to do it. I know a lot of knife collectors that are doing that now because one of the things that we lament about is there's just too many great knives. I can't afford all the knives that I want. And then these retailers and these brands started offering Sezzle. Now, don't get in over your head. You end up buying 10 friggin' knives. You're like, oh, well, it's only 50, 80, 90, $100 a month. I can afford that. And then you start getting those things auto-deducting. You're like, oh, shit, I forgot I bought five knives that way. I got to pay $1,000 a month. Be careful about that shit. But if you have some restraint and you're only buying a couple knives here and there, for 81 bucks, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. I wasn't sure how I felt about it. I still prefer the proportions of the other two. But since I am a Warncliffe fan, I've owned many Warncliffs, I understand how it's going to change that proportionally. Hold on one second. I have a warning right here that hopefully I can get to. Move everything out of the way. Here's another great one, full custom, that I got, what, a month or two ago, the uh, the Plunkett knives. And you see it does the same thing. Now, he doesn't go for the angle back here, but you see where the blade comes up looking short. And this is a, a custom knife that costs a hell of a lot more than these do. But that's what you deal with when you're making a Warncliffe, because you don't want your tip sticking out the back. And that's just how it's going to look when it's closed. So I'm used to that. doesn't bother me all that much. It may bother you. I don't know. But for those of you that love Warnies, that you own Warnies, you collect Warnies, I'm just going to put it out there that this is pretty much a must-own. Any, whichever, you, you want a spear point, you want the, uh, the drop point, which they call a sheep's foot. If you just like that longer fuller that's in there, whatever blade style you choose or the upcoming Tanto, Whichever body style you choose, frag or smooth. Then you have all the finish options and the stone wash or the black wash or so, I'm sorry, DLC or stone wash. Um, so many options. And then you can sprinkle a little bit of color, which by the way, that blue is really, really nice. He also does a teal, which definitely goes way more into the green realm. It's a real true teal. That's pretty sick. I don't believe that's going to be offered in a configuration. It would be, you would have to buy the additional hardware to get that. But very, very cool. So my uh, my general thoughts, I dig it. I really do. And now after handling a smooth body, it's been a while since I've handled a smooth body. You know, I'm, I'm 48 years old. My, my, you know, I haven't been with many 20-year-olds lately. Not lately. Smooth bodies are great. A few bumps here and there. Eh, it's okay. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I really like the frag a lot, but now I'm fragged out. I'm good on my frag. These are perfect. I'm happy with them. So I think 
whether it be the Tanto or the Warncliffe, whichever way I go. And uh, let's be honest, I'm probably going to buy them both. Again, hey, Cecil, <laughs> I'm going to do uh, the all murdered out, all black DLC because I just think it's going to look really, really sick. And uh, I have a lot of black guns and it'll match up well with my black guns. So anyway, them's my thoughts. Uh, put down in the comments below how you feel. Which do you like better? Do you like the spear point? Do you like the what they call sheep's foot, which is a drop point? Or do you like the worn cliff better? How do you think it, it matches up? I mean, again, when we put them all together, we put them, we'll put them right next to each other. How do you feel it stacks up when it's sitting here with the other two? What do you think of it? I think it's a wild departure. The more I look at it, you've got more cutting edge than the nimble. I'm tossed up which one of these two I like better. I don't know. It's, man, it's, wow, what a tough decision. Life's hard, isn't it? As a collector of anything. I mean, these are all frivolous purchases. None of these are going to cure cancer. You're, you're, you're buying a luxury item. And you're thinking, well, do I want the all black or do I want the Warren Cliff or the Tanto or the, the spear point or this or that? And then at some point you realize for the price of one good custom, I could buy two of these or three of these. And then it all clicks into place. And you're like, wow, that really is a great value when you break it down. Maybe I don't have to make a decision. Maybe I'll buy one of each size. I like the, the larger size of the W because it's, it's close to the X, but I also want a smaller lightweight knife to carry in the summer. So I'm going to buy a W and I'm going to buy a regular nimble whenever I see one pop up for sale somewhere. And they do every now and then in different Facebook groups and, and, and stuff like that. You'll find them every now and then. And people really aren't gouging that much. They're you know, maybe making like 50 bucks. Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. Talking's hard. They might be making an extra 50 bucks if that, but I haven't really seen people overcharging. These are all limited runs, by the way. I mean, let's let's take a look at this. There, there was, um, how is this numbered? Come on, focus. There was 100 made of this variation. That's not numbered. Oh, he didn't number them that way on the originals. This is just number 92. Don't know how many were made. But they're all very, very limited. There might be 100 of each variation, maybe, maybe a couple more, but that's it. So you know that whichever ones you buy you're in a very small select group. That's also really nice, isn't it? To know that, you know, only a few other people have the exact same knife as you. And let's say you bought this exact version with the blue hardware, all, all this and all that, and then you decide to change it out and you put purple or teal hardware in there. Now you have an even rarer edition that other people don't own. So there's that as well. Anyway, that's my thoughts. I better cut it off now. This is getting way, way, way too long. Uh, thank you, John, so much for allowing me to play with your prototype. I'm going to be sending this off to the next reviewer, whoever that may be. I'll find out later today, I'm sure. Um, it was a great pleasure having this. Um, I don't want to send it off tomorrow. Maybe I'll send it off Friday because I, I kind of... I'll be honest, I want to play with it more. I want to put it in the pocket. I promise not to mark it up. Um, I really like this. I, it's weird. We've been sitting here together 22, 28, about 28 minutes. I don't know how long, how many pictures I took and how long that's going to take to edit in. But so let's say just under a half hour and it's already, I've already started bonding with it. That's the weird thing about John's designs. No matter how much you like it when it first arrives, you like it more the longer you play with it. Oh, okay, I'm going to stop now. So, yeah, this is going to go off to the next reviewer, so you'll be seeing this little whore all over the internet, just like your high school girlfriend. And... Much like your high school girlfriend, I'm the one that got to play with her first. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now, and I'll catch you on the next video.